What's going on, y'all? This is James West with the West Report, man. As always, man, thank you for tuning in to another Athletically Declined show. As always, man, follow us on all social media platforms and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We just eclipsed over 250 subscribers. Thank you all to our fans as always, man. Let's keep let's keep that number rolling to the 300, 400, and 500. I would like to see 500 by the end of the year. Let's make that happen as always. Thank you all for your support. And before we even get started, man, just a huge shout out to our sponsors, man. T-Box Texas, Cowork Coffees, Ghost Pens, Bet Stamps. And the other ones that I miss, hey, man, I'm very sorry. But as you know, man, as we keep growing, we have more partners and more sponsors. Man, it's going to get crazy. That's all I know. And, of course, man, as you can see right now, yes, usually I'm usually in my contacts. Tonight I'm in my glasses. I don't know if you can tell if I got, like, baby snot on my shoulders because my daughter's been sick. The whole family seems to be sick. But you know what? I, I, don't, I don't want the baby snot on my shoulders. So, you know, we might do the West Report. Yeah, we might do the West Report shirtless, man. Hell, why not, man? Shoot, let's just let's just get it rolling. Just going to start out with a quick, simple one. Shout out, man. Not really a shout out, but prayers. Man, to Nick Chubb last night, man, that Brown-Steelers game was electric. If you didn't see, Steelers won 26-22 last night in Pittsburgh. Yes, the story of the night was mainly Deshaun Watson's turnovers. But, man, just a big prayers for Nick Chubb, man. Yes, he is technically on my fantasy team, so this hurts me. But, man, prayers to your knee, man. We all saw the injury, man, and... I don't wish that on anyone else, man. As always, the NFL is always one play away from maybe missing slash ruining a career, man. And Nick Chubb, man, hopefully you get a quick recovery on that knee injury. And, man, I just hate that to see that for other people as well. Man, I, I don't know if I've done baseball or whatnot, but, hell, let's go with it. The Tampa Bay Rays are staying in St. Petersburg, man. I'm so excited. Yes, you've seen it just coming out recently, the renderings of their new $1.3 billion stadium to stay in the Tampa area. Now, of course, this stadium is going to be over 30,000 seats. I've seen the video, I've seen the videos and I've seen the photos. This stadium, ooh, it looks so beautiful. And if y'all don't know me, I love seeing new stadium photos, as you can tell from not just the Tampa Bay Rays point of view, but also Kansas City is looking into moving into a brand new stadium in the Kansas City downtown area. And, the, you know, soon to be the former Oakland Athletics, hopefully going to Las Vegas. I remember doing a rendering video of the soon to be Las Vegas stadium, but I thought it was a done deal, but it seems like it keeps getting pushed back for the confirmation of Oakland moving to Las Vegas, but hey, man, like I said, the photos look amazing. The roof, I've been reading up on the roof that is supposed to, you know, it's going to be enclosed, but it does have the option to open up on real nice days, not real rainy or hot days, so it's going to be a cool environment for those Rays fans. Now, I will say this, Tampa Bay fans, y'all need to get y'all's asses in that stadium. I you know, yes, I know, with Tropicanda, you know, y'all did not want to come out and support the Rays. Yes, you could say it's either bottom three or bottom two worst stadiums in the MLB, but y'all are also one of the worst average attendance for baseball games. And this team is fairly competitive. I mean, look what they've done. They've been to the playoffs. They've been to the World Series, and it just seems like, Y'all only show up for playoffs, but I've always had an issue with baseball fans. I know 81 home games is a bit of a stretch to go see each and every game on like football and somewhat like basketball. But man, you can't average bottom of the bottom in attendance for a very good team that does really well in the AL East and in the AL just in general, and then pack out the whole thing with whatever the current capacity is at the old stadium soon to be. All I got to say is please show up at that stadium, Tampa Bay fans, when it gets built. Should be should be open for opening day in 2028. You know, it feels like a long way from now. But, of course, you know, with 
now being 23, we're soon to get to 24. We got some special sporting events, you know, and 24, 25, 26, boom, it'll be opening day 28 for you Ray fans. So we'll keep that going. Another topic I want to jump into, of course, if you didn't see, yes, the game of the week, I guess, in college football was definitely Colorado versus Colorado State. Now, of course, I'm not going to lie. I did not watch a lick of this game. I live on the East Coast, and that game started at 10-ish Eastern time. It supposedly didn't finish till almost 2 o'clock in the morning. That's the reason why I don't watch these games. It's way too late. I'm already pissed off anyways with the NFL and the NCAA booking these games on the late side of a weekend game. Like, if you're going to play the top West Coast teams, you need to play them at 7 Eastern. I don't give a flying crap if it's 4 p.m. over there in Los Angeles or in Colorado or in, you know, Washington. Play those games at 7 Eastern, man, because no one on the East Coast are going to watch y'all's games at 10 Eastern. Now, of course, there were tons of fans watching this game because, you know, the story of the town of college football, Deion Sanders. Yeah, he's been that guy, of course, now, of course, if you didn't know, 3-0 and Colorado Buffaloes, man, now they're going to head into Oregon, Eugene, Oregon, to face off against the Oregon Ducks. That's going to be a top 25 matchup. But getting a little off the rails here, I wanted to talk about the safety. Now, of course, the biggest thing, you know, leading into this game, you know, we already had the comments from Jay Norrell, and then we had Dion with, you know, his, I don't want to say the, uh, theatrics, but I know what he was doing. You know, he, he was promoting a good, good show after the comments and then with the shades and all that, everyone and their moms were in Boulder for this game for interviews and primetime TV, basically. But then again, during the game, of course, the biggest play that basically everyone's been talking about is, of course, Heisman candidate Travis Hunter, wide receiver and corner for the Colorado Buffaloes, goes out for a pass on the offensive side of the ball. Of course, Shadir misses him. But as a couple steps after the pass has already been incomplete, safety for the Colorado State Rams comes in and bulldozes him. Now, of course, I'm exaggerating over the bulldozer part. I will admit the safety did did hit him very, very late. Of course, man, I thought it was dirty. I thought he should have been ejected. Um, But I guess, you know, they didn't want to do that. I know Colorado State was already in the whole they'd already had like 16 penalties on them but still it ended up being a good game but the main part about that hit on travis hunter is because the safety now has been receiving death threats over the hit because the hit did technically knock out travis hunter not just from the game but for the next two to three weeks in the colorado buffalo season oh man it's just it's horrible it's horrible to hear that for travis hunter but you've already seen you've already seen dion Travis and everyone else step up for that Colorado State Ram. They're basically they are taking the high road. I know Travis was pissed at the game, but man, you cannot, cannot, can everyone? You can't just be trigger finger happy on them on them fingers when it comes to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever social media platform you're on. Look, man, did the guy make a mistake? Yeah, did, I think I know what he was trying to set. He was trying to set that moto. Like, hey, man, you're not going to catch nothing on me all day. Of course, his hate, his his hit was a little late. and ended up knocking, up knocking out Travis Hunter. But still, the Colorado Buffaloes found a way to come back after being down double digits in in the fourth quarter and ended up winning in, the, in overtime. Now, of course, guys, man, in a new social media world, man, we cannot be doing this. We cannot – we can't just be just – tweeting whatever our feelings and emotions are man let the let the players handle that on the field basically all of us we're just spectators we're just watching the game now of course we can have our opinion and say yeah the hit was dirty yeah the hit was uncalled for those are all fair but anywhere when it comes to death threats nah man that's definitely out of the line way over the line um you know disappointed but i'm not surprised you know of course we live in a day and an age where hey man social media runs the world so Man, all I got to say is Travis Hunter, cover ASAP, man. We need you on that field. I know I'm going to hate not watching you play against 
Oregon and USC these next two weeks. But, hey, Colorado Buffaloes, be ready, man, after. Once Travis is ready, hey, they'll get going. And, of course, hey, man, you know what time it is. Time for your favorite sports betting segment on Athletically Declined Sports. You already know what time it is. Yes, man, it is the weekly West Wager. Man, now I'm going to tell you, I know there's going to be some people that are going to be upset with me about this. But, hey, man, do not be mad at me. You know, hey, some of these games just did not pan out for me. Of course, man, hey, we started off off okay on Thursday night with the Eagles-Vikings game. Of course, man, um... We did we did some good things. I think we then we went one and one. I can't remember all these because I bet so many games. Friday was a uh, was horrible, not just in baseball but in college football as well. Saturday came along. I think we did not pan out well as 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 I wanted to, and as for the AD team. But man, you know, of course. And then Sunday, Sunday we actually Sunday and Monday we did well in the NFL. Man, we went. I think we went thirteen seven and one. I think if not, it was fourteen and seven. I forget because you know, I don't. I don't just get my lines off the Action Network. I also get my betting lines off. Of course, our our newest sports betting partner, Bet Stamps, man, where you can find all the odds from all different sports books, either in your local areas or in your regional areas. I have about at least ten different sports books where I like finding an edge from. And of course, if you don't, if you need an example. On Action Network, I can only bet – well, I can't bet. But on Action Network, I can track Carolina Panthers plus three. Of course, they only lost by three, so I pushed. But I found a line on bet stamps for a plus four and a half. Thank you, Bryce Young, going for that two-point conversion. I would have took an extra point as well, but thank you for that two-point conversion. I cashed there, and I cashed in some other areas. So, yeah, we went 14-7 and seven in the NFL. And, hey, man, of course – we're just going to do it like this. We're, you know, I'm going to give you not my top 10 bets, but the 10 bets I've already placed right now. Of course, when you watch this video, those are my 10 bets that I place already locked in, but I will be adding more when it comes to Friday college football, Saturday college football, and Sunday NFL. So we're going to start off with we're going to start with number ten. I'm going to go an easy one right here. Um, I hate betting some large spreads at time from time, but give me the San Francisco 49ers and the Coastal Carolina Chanteliers. Man, give me their money line parlay. It's coming in at a minus one sixty five. Of course, that's not the odds we want to hear because that's a lot of juice to give up, but. Hey, man, you know, you got the Giants coming off a crazy victory. They should have lost to the Cardinals, but I think the Cardinals freaking tanked on purpose. Made You know, basically put on a good show after being up like 28 to 0 or whatever it was. They're going to come off their high horse. This is a good letdown position for San Francisco, of course, a short week. But also the 49ers also played the Rams. They got a quick, quick road trip from L.A. to to San Francisco, of course, man, they handled their business. They didn't cover the spread. I think Coach McVay knew about the spread. I think he's a liar when he said he didn't know. But we're going to go there with number 10. Okay, and then we're going to go starting at number 9. Hey, give me Friday night. Give me Purdue plus 6 versus the Wisconsin Badgers. Now, of course, I before the season, I loved what I seen with this Wisconsin Badger team, with the quarterback Mordecai and the new coach Fickle from Cincinnati, but it just has not been panning out. Of course, yes, they yeah right now they're I think they're two and one. Of course, they lost a good game against Washington State, who is a real sleeper to win the Pac-12 of Cameron Ward, but they did get two victories. But those two victories weren't really convincing. Now you're going into conference play where Purdue's always tough at home. I know they give. Ohio State fits. They'll give Wisconsin some fits. And plus, Friday night, oh, yeah, the lights will be, I think, just a tad too bright. Will I go outright winner for Purdue? No, but I'll take the six points. Give me that for Friday night. Saturday, rolling into college football. Now, of course, I got three picks right now. 
Give me Auburn plus seven and a half versus Texas A&M. I think this line is a little too high. Uh, yes, I already know it's in College Station. It's a noon Eastern game, so it's probably going to be pretty warm or hot. Hopefully, it's cool, cooler in College Station. But give me, give me the plus seven and a half Auburn. I think Auburn with Hugh Freeze, Peyton Thorne, and this offense. I think they can they can do a little bit more. Maybe not as much as Miami did to Texas A&M in Miami, but I think I think Auburn being a as always a fierce SEC team every year. It doesn't matter if they're seven and six or eight and four. It don't matter. They're always a tough team. And I think the line's just too high. If it was plus three and a half, maybe I go AM. But give me plus seven and a half Auburn. Going down to the other Alabama team, I gotta hold my breath. Yes, I am going with Alabama minus seven versus Ole Miss. Now, of course, I am beating myself to a pole because I was thinking they were going to beat the crap out of South Florida. And the only tide that showed up was that rainstorm that had the rain delay. That was the only tide that showed up. Alabama didn't show up. Well, tide didn't show up. Crimson tide didn't show up. No one showed up. And it showed. Now, of course, Jalen Milrow is back as the starting quarterback. I think that is the game changer. Give me the minus seven Alabama. If I find it at minus six and a half, I'll take that. But right now I got minus seven. Bama over Ole Miss. I know it's going to be a shootout, but I like Jalen Milrow. He's probably going to have a huge standing ovation when he gets there, and it's just going to bring that to another level. And then last pick of the day, well, for college football on Saturday, give me Washington team total over 40 and a half points. Now, yes, they're playing Cal, but this is a home game. And, man, if Michael Penix Jr. is not the number one front runner in the Heisman, man, you are blind, man. What, 12 touchdowns, one interception. He's been blowing out teams left and right. They just kicked the crap out of Michigan State. And, you know, of course, they just beat the crap out of Boise. I forget the other team that beat the crap out. They just keep beating the crap out of teams. But I like the over 40 and a half. Yeah, so what am I calling for? Hell, give me, you know, hey, give me five touchdowns, two field goals. Give me or give me just six touchdowns. Call it a day. Cal, you know, is one of the weaker teams in the Pac-12, soon to be Pac-9 in my opinion. But give me Washington total. Michael Penix to have a huge day again. Now going into Sunday. Now, I like the Sunday slate. There's a lot of games that I like. Give me, starting off, give me Minnesota Vikings money line. Minnesota Vikings could easily be 2-0 in my opinion. You could say the same for the Chargers as well. Both of these teams could be 2-0. Now, of course, they've been let down. Um, Of course, with the Chargers getting basically beat by the Titans, who they should have handled their business, but I did cash Titans plus 3.5. And And with the Vikings, now, yes, it looked, It looked like a close game, but most of that game, they were getting the crap kicked out of by Philly, and there was just too many sloppy turnovers. The key thing, if Minnesota can find a way not to turn over the ball in the first half, I think Minnesota takes this game. Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson, too dominant, man. I I can't explain it any more than that. So give me Vikings money line at Minnesota. Also, Yes, I said I'm also I am scared of those large spreads, but give me Seattle minus six versus Carolina. Of course, Carolina coming from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast on a short week, just just getting beat by basically, you know, the Saints. Now, of course, it was basically 20 to 9 that whole game. And the Saints basically let them come back and backdoor cover. I had, you know, the Carolina plus three and a half and four and a half. So I was happy there, but this game was basically a knockout. This offense is just horrific to watch. Now, I don't blame that all on Bryce Young. It's a rookie. It's going to happen. You know, I like the pieces around him, but it just seems like they're not clicking with the offensive line in the playbook with Frank Wright and Bryce Young. Give me Seattle at home. Now, of course, I did this last time. Bet Seattle at home, and they disappointed me by getting the crap kicked out of by the Rams at home. So, Seattle, do me a favor, and let's win this one. And, you know, finish it out. Ooh, oh, no, basically my Sunday parlay. Now, like I said, I don't like betting real huge spreads, so screw it. Why not? Instead of betting these large spreads, give me KC money line. Give me Dallas money line. Give me Baltimore money line. Give me Miami money line. 
and give me Jacksonville money line. Yes, a five-team money line parlay for plus 165 odds. We like that. We like to hear the plus odds. Of course, bet 100, win 163, walk out with 263. Let's go. Let's get it. Most of these games are double-digit point spreads, you know, with KC, Dallas, and Jacksonville, I think. I think Jacksonville at nine and a half. But the other is Miami minus six and a half and uh, Baltimore at minus eight and a half. Let me just get those doves, man. Give me a dub, man. Let's let, let's let's win some. Let's win some, let's win a little extra money, man, so we can bet a little more on Monday. And my final two bets. We're gonna start off with. Yeah, I'm gonna go Rams plus two at Cincinnati. There's been rumors spreading around that Joe Burrow has re-injured that calf injury. Now, of course, he did that versus Baltimore. I cash Baltimore is a plus three and a half. They beat them, I think it was 27-24 in Cincinnati. I'm not going to lie. If Joe Burrow cannot play, I can I cannot wait. This Rams team, I kid you not, I doubted the Rams. I thought they were going to tank the whole season. Stafford and that crew has been lighting it up. If you haven't seen Mr. Fantasy's video about Puka, get Puka right now. Damn, that man is Cooper Cup Jr., Freaking 20 targets, 15 catches. What was it, 147 yards last Sunday versus the 49ers? And the 49ers supposed to have a great defense. Give me the Rams plus two in Cincinnati. And we're going to finish it off. Of course, my Eagles at Tampa Bay. And, yeah, guess what? I'm going Tampa Bay plus five and a half. Now, am I going for Tampa Bay to win the game? I hope not. I hope my Eagles go 3-0. and I think we can start off 7-0 and depending on the situation, but I like this Tampa Bay team. I mean, I didn't give them a shot in the NFC South, but I will say with Baker and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, this team, this team and Rashad White, this team is good. I mean, they beat Minnesota on the road. I cashed there as like a plus 6.5, and, a half, and they, I, I hit there spread this is past Sunday versus the Bears. Now looking at Philadelphia, yes, they have a what scares me about betting with Tampa Bay is Philadelphia has eleven days of rest, which can be good, which cannot be. Eagles, even though they're two and oh, they could easily be 0 2. They start off good, but then they suck in the second half in the later half of games. If you're gonna suck in the later half of games, give me the underdog course for a lot of people they cashed this past thursday vikings plus seven and a half plus seven plus six and a half even push at a plus six so if you're gonna suck like that every week and and still win the game give me tampa bay plus five and a half i can see this game easily being a 24 21 game or a 24 20 game but of course as you know those are my 10 Bets of the week so far, as I said, those are not just my only bets. I do add more bets to the list. Of course, if you want my bets, always either comment on the YouTube page, comment on this video right now, comment, either DM me on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I'll send out more of my picks. It's not a big deal. Trust me. I have no problem sending out my picks. I am not a stingy mofo. But, of course, that is the Weekly West Wager. And, hey, man. Before we wrap it up, just want to say, man, hey, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for new content coming up. We do have some new announcements with some new members to the team, man. I hope y'all like the new members. We were trying, like we said, we're trying to grow this channel. We're growing with team members. We're growing with subscribers. And of course, man, thank y'all for watching. Of course, this is the first time I did this West Report with a without a shirt. I don't know what my boss is gonna say. But I'll find out soon, as soon as I finish this clip. But as always, man, hey, man, y'all have a good one, man. Hey, let's win some money this weekend. And hey, man, check y'all out next week on the next West Report.